Well, with me now, Gibraltar's Chief Minister, the man being praised by the Prime Minister yesterday, uh, Fabian Picardo. Uh, welcome to you indeed. Now, Thank you. how can the Spanish claim victory if, as you and Mrs May say, nothing has changed? Well, I think that the obvious thing here is to look at the material which is objective and allows us to determine what the position is. You've got a treaty that in Article 3 defines the United Kingdom, including Gibraltar, and Article 184 says the United Kingdom will use its best endeavours, as defined in Article 3, to do trade deals with the, Uni with the European Union in the future. The Spanish didn't like that and they wanted that change. They said that the definition of UK in Article 184 was the same as in Article 3. Of course it was. There's a clarification given by the United Kingdom saying that there is no obligation to read the United Kingdom in that way in the context yeah, of the trade Yeah, but see, deals. that's the point, because I, I saw that on Saturday night, and, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but reading it to me, it seemed to be saying that, yes, Gibraltar no. could be left to one side no. in any future trade no, arrangements. No, you see, you've got to read the whole thing. So there's no obligation or presumption, but that's without prejudice to the fact that we are negotiating for Gibraltar. The, the fact is there's no reference to the right of Gibraltar to be included there, just the absence of obligation or presumption. Yeah. And the without prejudice well, if you haven't got the right, it could happen, right? Yeah, no, no, but the, the right has not been left out. In other words, the obligation and the presumption is one thing, but if you read the whole thing and the text that went in on Sunday as well, after the declaration in the notes from the European Council, I think Gibraltar's position is now actually stronger than it was, because the Spanish said there is a treaty yeah. right here, and that treaty right has not changed. Now, we know that... Um, Gibraltar wants to remain very much part of the UK because uh, there have been referendums which have uh, repeatedly shown that by a large majority. But we also know by a very large majority that Gibraltar didn't want uh, the UK to be leaving the EU. So might there actually be circumstances where, where it suits Gibraltar to be uh, separate from the rest of the UK in terms of negotiating a closeness to the EU in trade terms. No, let's look at this in, in detail. Why did Gibraltar vote 96% to remain in the European Union? Is it because we're particularly enamoured of the EU and its institutions? It looks that well, way. Well, look, I'll tell you what, in the last two years they did everything possible for us to fall out of love with them, given the way that they've treated us. But we did not vote to stay in the European Union because we love the European Union. We voted to stay in the European Union because we knew that that was the only way that we stopped Spain from having a veto when the time came for new trade deals to be negotiated, not as a result of the withdrawal agreement, because nothing yeah. has happened this weekend which gives Spain an advantage, whatever Pedro Sanchez So Spain has got a veto now? It's got a veto, thanks to the Brexiteers, thanks to the Brexiteers and everyone who voted to leave the European Union, because under the treaty to establish the European Union, the Maastricht Treaty and the Lisbon Treaties, once there is a new deal being negotiated, that has to be approved by unanimity. But it has one veto. In other words, it can veto the trade deal between the United Kingdom and the European Union, and the United Kingdom in that context will include Gibraltar. But it can't cleave Gibraltar away from the United Kingdom. That's the difficulty that we saw coming two and a half years ago, and that's we voted, why we voted to remain in the European Union, warts and all, and it has many. So do you now support Mrs May in asking Parliament to back this deal? I fully support Mrs May in the context of Gibraltar because I think this withdrawal agreement works very well for Gibraltar, in particular after the interpretation given to it by the Spanish over the weekend because the text has not changed and because you've got to look at what's happening here. This is not about what we voted for and what we believe Brexit to be. This is about how we get to what people voted for and what they believe Brexit to be. This is the interregnum, the period in between the process of leaving and achieving a new status. And for Gibraltar, that soft landing is much better than a cliff edge option. Gibraltar is a, a bit of an offshore economy. That's why you've got a lot of gambling and everything else like that. Do you think in the long run that's sustainable or will you have to come more in line with general international law? Well, I don't think that we are an offshore economy. We're entirely in keeping with the G20 principles, the OECD principles. We have the same rating as the United Kingdom when it comes to all of the assessments that are made in that respect. We're accepted by the code group of the European Union not to have, have harmful tax yeah, but measures. but you know what people say. It's a yeah, centre for gambling but, 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 but and let's, smuggling let's, and all Well, I mean, it's no more of a centre for gambling than the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has more online gaming companies established in the UK than in Gibraltar. There's only 20 odd in Gibraltar. They're the 20 biggest and most reputable in the world. So what you've got to do is look beyond the headlines, look at the reality of things. For example, in relation to Sunday, read the texts and not just yeah. hear what people say about them and then make a proper assessment in everything that relates to Gibraltar, in particular who we really are. Now, you raised the spectre of Franco in, in what was a very forthright uh, response to uh, the Spanish Prime Minister Franco, of course, the fascist dictator. We've also had uh, demonstrations on the streets of Paris. We've got... Uh, 
Hungary and Poland going in a particular direction. What is your reading of what's going on on continental Europe, or what we could now call uh, uh, the, re the EU27? Well, look, I think the PSOE government in Spain was a, a very good thing for Gibraltar. There was a change of attitude from the Partido Popular. But on Saturday, Pedro Sanchez looked like somebody else. He didn't look like the socialist prime minister that so many Gibraltarians thought was going to mark a change. He came out pretending that they had achieved a great triumph in relation to Gibraltar, as if that was the most important thing in Spain at the moment. Believe me, I read the Spanish newspapers every day. It's not the most important thing in Spain at the moment. It seems almost like a diversion ahead of the Andalusian regional elections. But if you look at the whole panoply of Europe, as you've asked me to do, there does seem to be unrest of all sorts all over the continent. And it's not the comfortable place that I grew up in. It's not the place that seemed to be looking towards a more peaceful future. It's more fractured. I think the, the leadership of Donald yeah. Trump in the United States uh, assists that fracture. And this is a much more yeah. dangerous world in which we live. I mean, how do you read what Trump said about uh... Britain not getting a good trade deal under this deal? Well, I mean, as, as I think I, I read on Sky News, it's exactly what Boris Johnson had said on Fox News a few moments before the President left the White House and before he stood in front of Marine One. OK, Mr. Carter, thank you very much. Indeed, we know that uh, we've got lots of uh, Sky viewers in Gibraltar. It's nice to have you here thank in the studio. So thank you.